going on guys today I want to talk about losing it all there's much talk that if you were a millionaire and you build up a business and you lost it all because now you have this millionaire knowledge that you can build it all back up again I'm here to tell you how that concept is fundamentally flawed and I'm about to tell you something that will prevent that from ever happening if this is your first time here, my name is Glendon Cameron. I'm your corporate coach. I am teaching you how to build businesses, create cash flow, so you can have a better and greater life. The art of holding is below. All right, so this is the trope that, hey, if I lost it all and I had this knowledge that I would be able to build it up again. Here's something that you guys need to understand. If you construct your wealth appropriately, there is no such thing as losing it all. This is how smart people go broke, leverage. I don't care how smart you think you are, I don't care how hip you think you are, leverage has a way of going bad on really smart people. Like, let's talk about 2020. How many people foresaw that happening? where if you had a business that was dependent, that was based upon leverage, you borrowed money to open up this business, you had a rental, you rented a spot, and you had fixed expenses of 50,000, then COVID hit, and you had to shut down. You're out of business. You're broke. You may even have to file bankruptcy. Now, I get a lot of pushback on this, and I understand because I'm in a different position than most Americans. I operate on cash. And from my standpoint, and we will use my heart attack in 2019. Did I lose my house? Did I move? Nope. Did I lose my vehicles? Nope. Did I have any bad debt occur? Did I, was I unable to pay my credit cards? Nope. None of that happened. Even though I had this health crisis my wealth went up. Now, we're gonna talk about this because I get a lot of pushback because a lot of people want to use leverage. And leverage appropriately used is a good thing. We're gonna talk about bad leverage, aka bad debt, and we're gonna talk about good leverage, aka good debt. On the personal side, I have no personal debt whatsoever. None, I don't have any car payments. I pay my credit card off sometimes several times a month. So I don't, I don't carry a balance on my credit card. From a personal standpoint, I am debt free. And I plan on keeping it that way. I put up a video talking about using a dividend stock portfolio and I, once again, I had the, 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 you know, I got a video that's gonna go up on Savage Finance tomorrow. And I want to deliver you from using debt for personal situations. If you can avoid having a car payment, you, you have more money in your pocket. If you can avoid having credit card debt, if you can avoid having debt you would have more disposable income to invest. This is a statistical fact. You can't argue with the math. You got debt, this lowers your money that you have that's free for other things. You don't have debt, you have more money for other things such as investing, stocks, real estate, or a business. And I want to deliver you from leverage. Now, let's talk about you know, I personally believe that any leverage on the personal side is bad. You want to know why? Because when you leverage something, you automatically reduce the usable amount of money you have in the future. 
you're actually bargaining the future for today on the personal side. Now, I'm going to give you an example of good debt. Good debt that I anticipate getting myself into in four years. I'm going to buy an apartment complex and I'm gonna put 30% down. So we're talking about a 10 to $15 million apartment complex. And this debt is going to be paid by the renters. And there will be enough payment from the renters to cover the debt, to cover the property taxes, to cover the property management company expenses, and there will be money left over. That's good debt. If you're not have debt, if you're not using debt to buy an asset that gives you an appreciable return, that IE is bad debt. And this is how many smart people go broke because like I did a video talking about people who claim to be millionaires and financing cars. And that, that prompted me to do some more research and to find out that most of the millionaires in the United States are asset based millionaires and most of them have a net worth of $1 million. When you go, cause there's 21 million millionaires and 11 million of them have a net worth that's asset based of $1 million. And then when you move it up to 2 million, the number falls to 7 million millionaires. And when you move it up to 3 million, it drops to 4 million. And when you move it up to 5 million, it drops to 1 million millionaires. And see at the five million dollar network you get to a higher cash position and then when you go to 10 million it's like 270,000 households 270,000 not even half a million people are in a position to you know a 10 million dollar net worth unless you are just loaded down with debt and there are many people in that net worth frame and this was from uh, research if you are a person that has assets worth $10 million and your cash flow is like 5% or sometimes 3% of that, you're in the danger zone because if things go funky, you could literally lose it all. But if you're in the $10 million range and your cash flow is 25%, you have a high enough cash flow to weather many storms because your cash flow is 2.5 million a year. That's millions, multiple millions of cash flow. And this is one of the places, like, because essentially, let me go ahead and tell you the goal, the agenda here. I want to create 100,000 corporate citizens with businesses that have a net profit of $250,000 a year. Now, why is that 250,000? That $250,000 for me was that point of liberation you because 250 gives you the income to become an asset based millionaire 250 gives you the ability to pay off your house in eight or ten years 250,000 a year gives you a lot of options and it opens up the door for greater wealth so that's where we are but essentially whenever i put up a video and people are talking about borrowing and all this other stuff I just shake my head because the great American credit indoctrination system has a lot of people by the throat that they cannot conceive. I was on YouTube. I was actually called stupid for buying two cars and not buying Bitcoin. Forget the fact that I've created a business that creates millions. Of, uh, that, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter that I've created a business that has created high enough cash flow where I can do things like that and not be harmed. Whereas people without my asset base, without my cash flow, are doing harmful things and they think they're smart because they're investing in something that is based upon nothing. But they think they're smart because they're doing that. Forget the fact that I have 21 years of experience as an entrepreneur. Forget the fact that year after year my profits grow. I am stupid for buying a fancy car that I like, you know? But I guarantee you that when the crypto markets turn and they will turn, these folks will be looking like fools. But that's enough about that. Essentially, 
I want to create a situation where you guys are deploying your cash and you're making smart decisions and you're building businesses because if you're like 75% of America, really 85%, you have low income. That's the problem. Your investments are a function of your income. If you have low income, low investments. You have higher income, higher investments. There's a YouTube channel called Our Rich Journey and people really like them. They seem to be like a really nice couple and they did a lot of entrepreneur stuff in the eight years for them to build that $2 million portfolio. They did a lot of increasing their income, increasing their income, increasing their income, which is the main point of contention that I have because a lot of you want to finesse or to go out and get these high limit credit cards or this high limit credit stuff and essentially don't develop the skills and the ability to create and generate cash and that's what we we're going to do here because i got a lot of stuff that's coming up but this is a well-worn tale of people becoming over leveraged take toys or us toys or us was making money but they weren't making enough money to cover their debt they were making money they had people in their stores every day and because their debt was so large Toys of Us went out of business. This is common. So this is where proper money management comes in. This is where debt load management comes in. And essentially, we, you have so many people who are wanting to play the leverage game when they're not <clears throat> in a position to play the leverage game. You're just simply not, especially if you're in low income, because if you're going to do leverage, going to my example of buying an apartment complex that makes enough money to service the debt, enough money to pay the taxes, enough money to pay the staff and still have a surplus of money. If your investment isn't doing that at some point, you're hustling backwards and you're in the danger zone. You've got companies out here that are chewing up venture capital and they're not making a profit. And once the venture capital, um, what is that game? Uh, musical chairs. Once the musical chairs in and the music stops and there's no chair to sit down, game over. And once again, I'm trying to breed a different philosophy, a different way of doing stuff because like I said, leverage on the business side is great. If you can borrow some money and buy an asset that's gonna give you enough money to pay that money back, plus an additional return on top of that, that's really smart. But on the personal side, I think that's just dumb. Having any, per any debt on the personal side other than a mortgage, I feel is dumb and I feel that it can be dangerous and it can turn on you. As we saw in 2020, a lot of people got their cars repossessed, a lot of people are in forbearance, many, many people are in a world of hurt because of leverage on the personal side. So this is how smart people go broke all of the time and I'm just saying, don't play that game. Don't play that game. Only use debt leverage for assets, business assets that provide the return. And once you do the math, if you may go out and get this loan and you're like, wait a minute, I'm just gonna be able to pay the loan back. And like, I'm gonna float something else by you because uh, I've been talking to uh, people who own apartment complexes and this is something that many people who buy apartment complexes do. They will take out a loan 20, you know, and put 25, 30% down, right? And let's say the property was 10 million. And then when the property appraises for 15 million, they would sell it, getting a $5 million return. And then they would get their 
25% back on top of that 10 million and then on that 5 million and then they will go out and buy another apartment complex and just do it all over again. And that's one technique that I've learned from someone who is actually buying apartment complexes. He said it took him three flips like that to get into his current position where he owns a $40 million apartment complex with $15 million worth of debt. So he has $25 million worth of equity into his apartment complex where, you know, his debt is very, very small part of the proceeds that come in. And he is doing, I think, after all expenses, he's doing like 4 million a year off of this one apartment complex, this one apartment complex. And, you know, he's getting ready to buy another one. So essentially this is some stuff I'm learning because even though it is my goal to buy an apartment complex in four years, I need to be in the marketplace right now. I need to what's going on. And like, you know, uh, this guy, we, we went to lunch. He schooled me on a lot of stuff. And this is something I did not know. Like, I'm not afraid to say, I don't know something. I don't know something. This is how you get smart when your ego isn't so big that you have to pretend to know stuff that you don't. And I was like, okay. And I saw how that worked. It made sense. Like use leverage to get this asset, let the asset appreciate, flip the asset, pull the profit out and then pull your money back out. And then you have, have more money because you know, essentially he, he did that. And this is maybe something that I'll do essentially buy an apartment complex, let it appreciate it, flip it, get another one and you know, do two or three flips and get to the position where I have even greater passive income. That's a good use of debt. That's a good use of leverage. And like I said, once again, in business, buying assets that appreciate, good use of leverage. In personal life, financing cars, dumb, just dumb. Unless you can finance a car, start a YouTube channel and get a lot of money. You know, it, it really depends, but just, Financing car to drive around, um, I, I think that's just dumb. I feel that you should get a used car that you can pay cash for and then stack your money, stack your chips and position yourself to get wealthy. So that's all I got for you guys. And here's something else that's new. I've had a lot of people who want to get in the corporate toolbox. And you know what? We're about to make that available. You can get in the corporate toolbox and you'll get everything at the Savage Financials You'll get everything at the YouTube Super Creative and you'll get everything in the corporate toolbox. And for one year, if I create anything new, you will get all of that for one year from your date of purchase. However, there will not be a $150 payment plan. You will either have pay in full or have a two or three month payment plan. And that's how you get into it. Because I got a lot of people who want to get in the corporate toolbox and I'm like, all right, fine. If you want to pay that bread, go ahead, we can do that. So all of those links are below and I will see you guys in the next video.